Hey friends, Ash here at GenSense with another top 10 list. And today we're gonna to be checking out 10 different fragrances that you can pick up for under 40 bucks that are going to be very good for cool and cold weather. So basically fall and winter time fragrances. And do keep in mind that these prices are based off of how much I can pick them up for here in the United States. So these are cheap fragrances under 40 bucks, assuming you live in the US. If you live in Europe or Asia, wherever you might be, all of these fragrances might not be cheap for you. Some of them might be more expensive, some of them might be difficult to find. So do keep that in mind with this video that I had to price these out based off of what I can get them for. We've got 10 fragrances to talk about. There's lots to go over, so let's jump into this. I do like to do these videos every so often just to kind of highlight some good inexpensive fragrances because not everybody has to spend a ton of money in order to smell good and back in the day when I was younger I didn't have a whole lot of extra money to spend so lists like this would have been really helpful to me back you know a decade ago. So that's one of the main reasons I try to get one of these out every two or three months or so. Alright guys let's start it off with this one. Ferragamo Womo. Now, the Salvatore Ferragamo Womo line in general is a very good line for people that don't have a ton of money to spend because now this line covers just about any situation that you would need a fragrance for and all of them are fairly inexpensive. So this line includes Womo and then the Flankers, Casual Life, Signature, and Urban Feel. So you've got four different ones there, and if you wanted to, you could almost break those out. Have this one be for fall, Womo Signature for winter, Casual Life probably for spring, and then Urban Feel for summer. Though so Casual Life and Urban Feel, you could probably use those in spring or summer, either one. The one that we're gonna highlight in this video, though, is just this, the original Ferragamo Womo. Has tiramisu, tonka, ambroxan, and cardamom as some of the notes in the fragrance. It is a very sweet, coffee-ish, kind of scent. So that coffee vibe obviously going to be coming from the tiramisu, but it's very much a sweetened coffee. It's got bits of spice throughout the fragrance. It's rich. It's warm. Like I said, great for cooler weather, especially fall, uh, but works just as well in winter. It's inexpensive, obviously, because it's on this list. It's got a great looking bottle. The atomizer is right here. There is no cap. You just press down to spray it. I've reviewed this in the past, as have most YouTubers out there. And it's a uh, it's just a solid release. That being said though, if you don't like overly sweet fragrances, you may not like that one because despite it being a coffee centric sort of scent with the tiramisu, it is very, very sweet. From there, we're gonna go to a Banana Republic fragrance. And this one is Tobacco and Tonka Bean. This is one of their newer Icon fragrances. They have the Icon collection, which basically any Banana Republic fragrance that comes in this bottle is part of that collection. Like I said, they had four fragrances that came out recently. Two of them were geared more toward men. This one, Tobacco and Tonka Bean, and then Dark Cherry and Amber. Now, Dark Cherry and Amber might sound a little more interesting to you because of that dark cherry note. Cherry doesn't get used heavily in men's fragrances, but this one is actually, in my opinion, much better than Dark Cherry and Amber. Dark Cherry and Amber opens up nicely. The uh, cherry smells great initially, but then it falls apart. This one has pear, plum, coconut, and then of course, tobacco and tonka bean. So you're gonna get a lot of fruity sweetness there initially, and then a little bit of a tropical twist with the coconut before the tobacco and tonka really start to take over. It is uh, a bit of a syrupy kind of sweetness that's in this fragrance. I actually compared this to a uh, Zara fragrance that got a lot of hype, Rich Warm Addictive which is one of their tobacco fragrances. This and Rich Warm Addictive do share similar notes, so that's where the similar vibe is going to come across. Though between the two, if I could wear just one at this point, I would rather wear this one. So that is the second one I'm going to highlight here, Banana Republic Tobacco and Tonka Bean. Next up is an oud-based fragrance. I figured that I need to fit in at least one oud fragrance here, but obviously had to find a cheap enough oud fragrance that it would work. And the one that I went with is this one, Vince Camuto 
oud. It has oud, cedar, leather, pink pepper, and amber as some of the notes in the fragrance. And if you look on Fragrantica, as of me shooting this video, there are only 46 votes from people on how good this fragrance is. And that tells you right away how successful this fragrance has been. It's been out for a little while now, and a whole whopping 46 people have voted, under 50. That being said, this is a nice woody fragrance. Uh, the oud is toned down and dialed back a bit. It's very wearable, very approachable. The oud here is not funky or aggressive or in your face. And to me, actually the cedar comes across a little bit more prominently than the oud does. That being said, you can still pick up the oud in here. Obviously, it's not going to be a natural oud, but it smells nice. Then you have a spice blend of saffron, nutmeg, and pink pepper in here as well that kind of works together with those woody notes. And there's also uh, a bit of leather as well. It's one of the more affordable ouds out there. Uh, really, Vince Camuto is an affordable designer line in general. Like I said, the oud is not aggressive, it's not in your face, so this could make a nice starter oud if you're not really uh, accustomed to how oud smells, if you're not used to it, if you're unsure of it. A fragrance like this would be a good starter fragrance down your oud journey. Now if you like more complex oud fragrances or natural oud fragrances, then you probably won't like Camuto oud, but I think that it's a really solid cheap fragrance, and like I said, it's a good one to get you started on oud in general, and a great fragrance for cooler weather. Next up is a fragrance from Guess. It's Guess 1981, Los Angeles. It's got amber, tobacco, plum, pepper, and ginger as some of the notes in this fragrance, and a lot of people have compared this to Versace Eros, and said that this is just straight up a 100% clone of Eros, and it is not a 100% clone of Eros. It opens up with plum, mint, ginger, and pepper. So you've got this interesting kind of contrast in the opening. You've got some freshness, some sweetness, and then you've got the rich, deeper plum, and that all just kind of melts together when you first spray this on. Now, that being said, the longer this is on your skin, the more it dries down, the closer it does get to Versace Eros. So while this isn't a straight up 100% clone of Eros, after the opening, as it dries down, it is going to remind you of Versace Eros. It has good performance, lasts for a long time, but it's not as loud as Eros, it's not quite as in your face. So if you do like that Eros DNA, but you want it with a little bit of a twist and maybe not quite as loud, definitely check that one out. And also guess LA is cheaper than Versace Eros. Next up is this one, Mandarina Duck Black. I've actually had this for years and just never brought it up on the channel until now. At least I don't think I have. It's got Tonka, Vanilla, Tangerine, and Sandalwood as some of the notes in the fragrance. And the two most prominent notes are going to be the vanilla and the tonka kind of melding together. Those two notes are used constantly together and they work well. It's sweet, it's semi-creamy. At times it comes across with just a touch of powder from the vanilla. Through the mid, there are some florals that come into the fragrance and you've got a little bit of spice all throughout the life of the scent as well. This is nice quality for the price. It's actually really nice quality for the price because this is one of the more inexpensive fragrances in this list. Once upon a time, that got a little bit of hype on YouTube, but this was years ago, and I believe that's when I first picked it up myself. Worth re-highlighting this one, though, for cool weather. If you're looking for an inexpensive fragrance that does feature those notes I talked about, especially the vanilla, the tonka, and sandalwood, check this out. Five down, five to go. Next up is from Hugo Boss. It is Boss Bottled Intense. Eau de Parfum. This has apple, cinnamon, vanilla, and clove as some of the notes in the fragrance. This does retain the DNA from Boss Bottled, which is one of the more popular designer releases over the past few decades. So this DNA has been everywhere. <laughs> You've probably smelled this. If you haven't smelled Boss Bottled at least once in your life, I would be surprised. Now this isn't the exact same as Boss Bottled Eau de Toilette, but if you have smelled the Eau de Toilette when you smell this, you're gonna be like, okay, yeah, I, I get that. It is exceptional for fall time, just a great fall fragrance, works great in winter as well. Some people will say that it smells like a, an apple pie, like a warm apple pie. To me, it comes across more like apple spice, not necessarily a baked apple pie, but I 100% understand where people are coming from when they say that. It is definitely sweet, but not overly sweet. 
and the fragrance comes across very comforting to me when I smell it. It's a, a very comforting type of scent. It does have a little bit of a woody base that you'll pick up as this dries down, but really the thing that people will remember most from that is that wonderful, rich apple spice. The only drawback for that one really is the fact that it's extremely popular, that DNA, the Boss Bottled DNA. Next up is one for my clone boys. Clone boys, that's the new, uh, the new term for everybody that likes to roll with clones. You're the clone boys. This is Armoff Craze. Now, just to make sure there's no confusion, this is Armoff Craze, the original. Armoff Craze Fresh is complete and utter garbage. It's a dumpster fire, it is trash. Do not buy Armoff Craze Fresh. Armoff Craze Blue also sucks. That is a terrible fragrance. Don't buy that fragrance either. But this, this is the original Armoff Craze. And that is the one that you should maybe check out because the others are absolutely horrible. To be fair though, I haven't smelled Armoff Craze Noir, so that one might be all right. But with the track record of Armoff Craze, eh, I don't think I'm gonna be buying it. And one more thing, uh, this happens with Craze bottles fairly often. You'll see how this looks, a little collar right here. Watch this. Oh, the whole thing came off. And then you can just attach it like that and kind of put your bottle back together like you're building Legos. That happens with Craze bottles. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. This has almond, vanilla, heliotrope, and amber, and this is a clone of Parfums de Marly Pegasus, which some people will call Parfums de Marly Pegasus a clone, or a niche clone, of Christian Dior Hypnotic Poison. So we're almost reaching inception levels of cloning with our moth craze. This one opens up harsh for the first few minutes, but that dies away quickly. After that, this is a very close clone Parfums de Marly Pegasus. So if you like that fragrance, but you want to save a whole bunch of money, check this one out. It has a sweet kind of metallic vibe to it, which a lot of people will attribute to the almond note in this fragrance. Performance here is very good. It could come across cloying though, so don't go too heavy with the trigger on this one. As far as our moth clones go, some of them are, like I said before, absolutely terrible and have no use whatsoever other than possibly spraying on a bug to kill it, or maybe just throwing it into a fire. I don't actually suggest or say that you should spray bugs and kill them with our moth fragrances, just so nobody gets on my case about that. But yeah, our moth craze is one of the good ones, and it's one that's worth checking out. And that one actually, people had said was discontinued, and the price on that was going up, 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 up. And on eBay, it was getting really hard to find. People were charging a big premium. But as of this video, our moth craze is back in stock at discounters. So I don't know if that's gonna be something that you can find down the road or not. But just making you aware of that, that people were afraid of that being discontinued for a while. Next up is one of the best cool weather cheapy fragrances that you can buy. This one is great. I love this fragrance. And it's one that's been talked about for years as one of the best cool weather fragrances that you can buy on the cheap. And just because it's been talked about for years that way doesn't mean that it is not still true because it definitely is Burberry London. This has port wine, tobacco, cinnamon, leather, and lavender are some of the notes in the fragrance. And the thing that I love most about this one is the port wine and the tobacco, the way that those work together. A lot of people out there have referred to this fragrance as the holidays in a bottle. So basically through, you know, Thanksgiving, through Christmas, New Year's, that that time frame, that part of the year, people will say, oh yeah, Burberry London, that's my go-to. It's fantastic smelling, it's rich, it's deep, it's spicy, it's sweet. Just an awesome scent. I have had this for years. I've got a couple bottles of this. And if they ever discontinued this fragrance, I would probably buy like two or three backup bottles just because. This fragrance has been talked about a lot on YouTube and cool weather centered type of videos. So I'll leave it right there with Burberry London, but I love that fragrance. We're in the final two. Next up is a fragrance from a house that does not get a whole lot of love, but this is a solid release and you can pick it up for under 30 bucks as of this video. It is Michael Kors for men. Now this one came out in 2014. There was also a fragrance that came out in 2001, which was Michael for men. This is Michael Kors for men. The Michael for men release had Michael right here 
in the center of the bottle. It just said Michael. And then eventually that same release, Michael Kors, or just Michael, excuse me, the 2001 release said Michael Kors, but it was right here at the top in the middle. Obviously you can see this one says Michael Kors for men along the side of the bottle. Other than that discrepancy, the way that the text is written and where it's written, uh, the bottle is the same. It's the same cap, the same bottle style, uh, everything else pretty much the exact same. The 2001 was discontinued, but you can still find it on sites like eBay. If you buy Michael Kors for men through a discounter, you're gonna be getting this one, most likly. This one has incense, suede, star anise, and patchouli as some of the notes in the fragrance, and this is a fantastic suit and tie type of scent. It works very well in situations like that, formal situations. It's sophisticated, refined, gentlemanly. At the same time though, you can wear this casually very easily as well. It's semi-sweet the whole way through, not overwhelmingly so, just, just the right amount, just subtle enough. And then you've also got that incense and star anise that work together perfectly. There are bits of spice in here as well, uh, coriander, and pepper, and those really just take this to the next level. Out of all the fragrances on this list, of the ones that I would wear in more situations more often, uh, this one is the one that I would pick if I had to choose just one of these to wear. Now I think these are all solid releases, it's just this one does it for me. Now we're to the final fragrance in this list, and it's also, I believe, the cheapest one in this list. Yeah, it actually definitely is the cheapest one in this list. It is this one, Michael Jordan Legend. Now, the bottle here is not the greatest looking bottle. It does look cheap. I mean, the cap feels cheap. The atomizer looks cheap. I mean, you can see what I'm talking about right there. And the atomizer actually kind of sucks, if I'm being honest. It does like a puff of fragrance. I'll show you guys here. Yeah, so it doesn't really spray out a very concentrated blast. It's just kind of puff, puff, but it gets the job done, I guess. This has coffee, amber, lavender, and anise as some of the notes in the fragrance. And this one gets compared to uh, Bond Number no. 9, New Harlem, and Rojas Man. Basically, the simplest way to break this down, the way that most people end up breaking this down when you're just trying to do it as quickly as possible, is that it smells almost like uh, pancakes for breakfast with maple syrup on top and then a coffee on the side. And that's a decent description because this is a gourmandy fragrance. It's got that sweetness in here as well and it almost smells a little bit edible. This one is technically a cologne. If you look on the bottom, it says cologne spray. So you may think, oh, it's gonna last two hours and then it's gonna be gone. But I actually get good performance from this one, surprisingly, and lots of other people do as well. One thing to remember though, is that that atomizer, like I showed you, is not that great. So you may wanna go a little heavier than usual on here because it doesn't spray out as much fragrance as a lot of other brands atomizers do. Michael Jordan legend, despite not coming from a designer house and just being a Michael Jordan fragrance, uh, actually is surprisingly good quality, which is made even more surprising when you consider the price for this thing is under 15 bucks. It's a solid cool weather fragrance, great for fall and winter time. Michael Jordan legend wraps up this top 10. All right guys, that's gonna do it for me today. Let me know which of these fragrances is your favorite in the comments below. And as always, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. See you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.